Start with an isosceles triangle and fill in the triangle with certain triangular and L-shaped rectangular tiles as shown. Because the triangle has a base of length 10 and a height of 12, we see that the area shaded by the tiles is 60, which is the area of the triangle. But now let's take an exact copy of the triangular shell and move the tiles around inside the shell as follows. Using this organization, two squares in the interior are left unshaded. The triangle is still 10 by 12, so it encloses an area of 60, which means the shaded area covered by the tiles is now 58. But we can do even more. Now let's draw a 9 by 7 rectangle and use the tiles to fill in the rectangle as shown. There are now four unshaded squares in this diagram. Because the rectangle is 9 by 7, the shaded area is now 63 minus 4, or 59. Does this mean that 60, 58, and 59 are all equal? That of course can't be. Go ahead and pause the video now and see if you can figure out where the trick is. I will note that all the shells really are triangles in a rectangle, and all the tiles are either triangles or L-shaped rectangular tiles, and always enclose the same areas in each of the three images shown. Did you figure it out? Here's the trick. The triangular shell is 10 by 12, so the slope of the side length is 5 12 But if you look carefully at the two left triangular tiles, they have slopes of 7 thirds and 5 halves, which don't equal 5 twelfths, although 5 twelfths is the median of these two fractions. If we zoom in on where these two triangles meet, we see that there's a gap between them and the side of the triangular shell. It turns out there's enough area on this side of the triangle to fill one half of a square, and the other side of the triangle has another half square. Similarly, when we zoom in on the second image, we can see that now the tiles extend slightly outside of the triangular shell because the slopes don't match, and there's another one half of the square on either side that lies outside the shell. Thus, we picked up the missing one square area from the first diagram, plus an extra missing one square area, leaving us with two blank squares in the middle of the diagram. It turns out there is nothing funny going on with the third diagram. If you compute the areas of each tile individually, you will see that they enclose a total area of 59. In the final image, we are not aligning two triangles together in a way that implies they form the side length of a third larger triangle. The moral of the story is that while visual proofs can be very informative, make sure you have thought about each detail carefully enough to believe that the diagram suggests a general truth.